Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to talk about angle side theorems. Okay, theorem number 20. This could be an, a, another theorem in a different book. Uh, the number doesn't matter. Uh, but this theorem says that if we have two sides of a triangle that are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides are congruent. And you can write the shorthand as if, and then in the red, the triangle with the two dash, or hash marks on um, the two sides, then the triangle where the angles are congruent. So if sides, then angles is the shorthand for this particular theorem. So we're given that in this case, AB is congruent to AC and the diagram is marked up accordingly. We know that BC is congruent to itself. So I can say this is a, just a different look at the same triangle in this case. I have triangle ABC, which is congruent to triangle ACB. So again, we're looking at the same triangle, but just a different orientation and ordering of uh, the letters in the triangle to represent that different orientation. I can say that triangle ABC is congruent to ACB by side, side, side. Since I have two congruent triangles within the same triangle, I can say that angle B is congruent to angle C. So angle B, you can see in order, is congruent to angle C. And there is by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And there's your proof for the theorem. If sides are congruent, then the angles opposite the sides are congruent. All right, theorem 21, a different uh, side of the same coin. If two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite the angles are congruent. And shorthand here is if angles, then sides. So here we have given angle D is congruent to angle E. The diagram is marked up. I know that DE is congruent to itself, and these marks shouldn't be marked up just yet. So I can say that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle EDF, and again, we're looking at the same triangle, but just oriented in a different fashion by angle side angle. Um, so I have angle D side DE, and then angle E, and then I also have angle E side ED and then side, uh, angle D. So in that orientation, the two triangles are congruent by angle side angle. And as a result of the congruency, I can say that DF is congruent to EF by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, moving on. And now we have some offshoots for both of the theorems. The first one relates to the uh, sides, if the sides are congruent and the angles opposite them are congruent. We can also say if two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the angles opposite them are not congruent, and the larger angle is opposite the longer side. So in this case, I have two sides in uh, the diagram, one that is has a uh, side measure of 7 and one that has a side measure of 10. And I am given one angle measure of 50 degrees. Well, I know that based on this theorem that the angle in question here is going to be larger than uh, 50 degrees because the side opposite that angle is larger than the side opposite the smaller or uh, is going to be the side opposite the 10 is going to be larger than 50 degrees because the side opposite this angle in question is larger than the side opposite the angle measure of 50 degrees. All right, theorem 21b, if two angles of a triangle are not congruent, then the sides opposite them are not congruent. So again, we're taking uh, theorem 21 and we're changing uh, the theorem to represent the incongruence of the uh, angles and the resulting sides. So in this case, I have two angle measures, one that's 30 degrees and one that's 80 degrees. The side opposite the 30 degree uh, measure is going to be five units. And then I know that the side opposite the 80 degree measure is going to be larger or longer than five units because the angle measure that's opposite that side <clears throat> is larger than the angle measure of 30 degrees. Okay. Last part. So uh, we're going to prove using the um, angle bisector or the angle side theorems, we're going to prove um, that the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is also the median to the base of a triangle. So again, 
The bisector of a vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is also the median to the base of the triangle. So I've marked up the diagram. I have the bisector of the vertex, <clears throat> and that's uh, AR. It's also going to be the median to the base. So what we need to do is to prove that BR is congruent to RF. So first we're given a triangle BAF, which is isosceles, with angle BAF as the vertex. So I know as a result that BA is going to be congruent to AF, and I've marked up the diagram accordingly, and that's uh, as a definition of isosceles triangles. Then I also know that AR bisects angle BAF, and that's given, and I've marked up the diagram here with the uh, marks. So angle BAR is congruent to FAR. Uh, so angle BAR is congruent to RAF, uh, and that's the definition of angle bi bisector. And then I know that AR is congruent to itself. So that tells me that triangle BAR now is congruent to FAR, um, and it should be FAR, not uh, RAF, by side angle side. And I give the statements and reasons that are reflected uh, to support that postulate. And since BAR is congruent to FAR, I know that <clears throat> BR is then congruent to RF because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now I can say that AR is the median to the base because by definition of a median, the median is that line or line segment that originates from the vertex and bisects the uh, opposite side into two equal halves.